But this morning, being Palm Sunday, we're going to hear uh, this morning as we uh, gather for worship, we're going to hear from the Word of God in Matthew chapter 21. We're told that when Jesus, when they had come near Jerusalem and they had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey and a a colt tied with her. Untie them and bring them to me. The disciples went out and did just as Jesus had directed them, which, you know, by the way, is just a good thing to do in general. They brought a donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat upon them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that were ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Dear friends in Christ, as we shout Hosanna and raise our palms, let us understand Jesus' love for us. And let us understand the world more clearly. Let us be transformed by the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and prepare to experience this week in grace and in truth. Let's uh, grab our palm branches and let's shout together this morning the words that are on the screen for us, the words of Scripture. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Let's do that one more time. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Amen. Welcome to worship this morning. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all. The world that hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout The universe display Then sings my soul Sings my soul, my Savior. 
finally got a chance to make a bunch of movements and raise your palm branches. The Tweet Boys were doing well. All right. <laughs> and your daughter. You can keep doing it during this song. This is another fast, fun song. This is Amazing Grace. One, two, three, four. you rock <laughs> rocks our drummer we really miss him on that I'm song. sure he's out there listening I know <laughs> he is let's uh, pray this morning holy God this is the day that you have made you have filled it with signs of your presence your spirit breathes every moment your grace fills each experience your promise moves with the wind calling us towards hope. Receive, Receive our, our thanks. Receive, Receive our praise. Christ, Christ our Lord. For in his love, we know your deep love, your faithfulness, your grace. Amen. I find my rest. 
Mighty and loving God, we give you thanks for this day and for everything that this day means. This is a special day in the life of the church when we come together to enter into the greatest story ever told. We take on a position of humility and of power as we shout, as ancient crowds shouted, as we shout Hosanna to the Son of David, the Messiah, our King and your Son, Jesus. Be with us as we go through the motions of this week, as we walk through the days, these holy days that mean so much to our faith. In the midst of all of this, O oh God, we do this to restore our hope. Because sometimes life is heavy and hope feels hard to find. You've heard us in the midst of that today. As we lift those that were involved in car accidents, those with new diagnoses, those who continue to heal. as we bring before you our hearts that might just be a little bit dinged up because of the general state of the world. But God, your word proclaims that sorrow lasts for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And we give you thanks for those that have sunlight upon them this day. As we rejoice over family visits and birthdays. As we give thanks for your enduring presence and promise in the midst of all of life. And as we give you thanks for Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, our example, and our anchor, the one who gave us the gift of prayer in the first place by saying to his disciples, pray this way, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. My life is yours. My hope is in you only. My heart you hold. You made this. Yeah. 
Jesus, you are good. Thank God for moms. <laughs> it's a little early to be entering the tomb, friends. We're not quite there. So today's a little different, isn't it? What have we done so far today that's been different than usual church? Hi, hey, buddy. Do we have these things? What are these things called? Leaves? Palms. Yeah, these are palm branches, right? Yeah, why do you think we use palm branches on Palm Sunday? What's, what's Palm Sunday all about? What do you think? Yeah, Jesus comes to town, right? Does Jesus come to Canton? No, where did Jesus go? Well, to everywhere in the world, yes. But so, so not Canton, but also not not Canton, right? Yeah. Jesus comes to a town that starts with a J. <laughs> Jerusalem, right? Jesus comes into Jerusalem, and people shout something very, very important to him. They shout the word Hosanna. Can you say Hosanna? Hosanna. Hosanna. So based on all of your years of education, what do you think Hosanna means? What does that word mean? Why do we say that word? What could that word mean? It could mean what? A name of a food. No, it's not a name of a food. Anyone? Anyone else have a guess? What do you think? Uh, hi. Hi? It could mean hi. No, it's not quite that, though. Hosanna is a word that means save us. Hosanna means save us. They're shouting at Jesus and they are saying, save us. Have you ever been in trouble before? Yes. Yeah? Have you ever been like in super, super big trouble before? Yes. Yeah? Who saves you from trouble? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. But who else? God. But who else? Think a little bit lower than Jesus, but above, you know, a little bit higher. Hosanna. Nope. Parents. Parents, right? When we get in super, super big trouble, like when we climb in the tomb before it's Good Friday, I'm, not, I'm joking, they're not in super, super big trouble, it's fine, I understand being curious. But sometimes we get in super, super big trouble and our parents bail us out, right? Yeah, our parents cover for us or help us or they teach us something so we don't do that again, Right? These are all things that God does for us. These are all things that Jesus does do for that Jesus does for us. That we're going to learn about this week as we go through Holy Week. Jesus saves us from the biggest trouble that we can be in because Jesus saves us from what? Starts with an S. Say it loud. You're right. Sin, right? Jesus saves us from our sins. And so when we do um, when we do bad things, when things like that happen, when we make mistakes we can cry out to Jesus, and we can cry out, Jesus, Hosanna, because that means save us. All right? Can we think about doing that next time? All right, let's pray. Hey, Jesus, repeat after, repeat after me. Hey, Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you that your love is so great that you are the one who saves us. When we go through hard times, help us remember you, because you are with us. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up this morning. Grab a treat and head back down to your adults. Our scripture this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 27. Mere days after where we were at the start of church this morning, but uh, an important part of the story. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of his robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Would you pray with me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts 
be holy and acceptable to you. For you are our rock, and you are our redeemer. And we give you thanks for who you are, as we say together, Amen. So today we have heard two segments of the same story taking, uh, taking place mere days apart. We started worship this morning on Palm Sunday. We started worship with Jesus making his triumphant entry into Jerusalem and the crowds recognizing him and the crowd shouting, Hosanna, a word that we talked about that means save us. They broke off branches from the palm trees and threw their cloaks on the street. The crowd that gathered recognized Jesus for who he is. The crowds recognized Jesus as the one who was worthy of having Hosanna shouted to him and the one who could actually do what they were asking him to do, which was to save. They were looking to Jesus, for someone to save them from their afflictions, save them from their ailments, and save them from their sins. The joy and the celebration that was present on that day is quite simply palpable. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save us now. But as the week unfolds, things change. The triumphant entry was just the start of the greatest suffering of Jesus' life. As the week unfolds, there will still be shouting, but there will be no joy. Because very shortly in the midst of the week, the crowds that shouted Hosanna will shout something very different. The crowds will shout, release Barabbas. The crowds will shout, crucify Jesus. The crowds will shout, let his blood be on us. All throughout the season of Lent, we've been asking questions. We've been digging deep into our faith and our faithfulness. We have been laying a foundation that will hopefully not be shaken by Holy Week. We've been learning through questions and answers how to hold firm to our faith when things are up in the air. We've gone back to the very basics of our faith. Who is Jesus and what does God want from us? We've talked about our priorities and our views of ourselves. What is the most important thing? Where do we find fulfillment? And am I accepted in the presence of God? But I don't think that we can do a series on questions about our faith without dealing with this one. What is is it that we do with suffering? Why do we go through suffering? Why do bad things happen to good people? This is a question that has kept people away from faith. This is a question that has made people abandon their faith. This is a question that is called the bedrock of atheism. How can we possibly believe in an all-good, all-loving, always-present God when so much bad stuff happens in the world? Like, we know enough about the world, we know enough about what's going on to understand suffering. And sometimes we just wonder. And sometimes there's no good answer. But it is still a good question for us to ask, especially as people of faith and especially during this week. Because what does it mean to our faith? What does it say about our faith that Jesus himself, Jesus, the Son of God, what does it mean that he endured suffering in his life? 
All throughout the Lenten season, we have seen Jesus live what is called by the prophets a life of sorrows, a life of suffering. Throughout the course of Lent, we have seen Jesus questioned and trapped and tricked and abandoned. And what we know from our scripture this week is that things are about to get worse as Jesus makes his faithful and faithful journey to the cross. That all starts in our scripture this morning. Before the crucifixion, Jesus is taken to the governor's residence. But that's not as glamorous as it sounds. One might expect that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords would be welcome at such a place. But he is not there on his own terms. He is there to begin the process of crucifixion. Because every crucifixion starts with a scourging. Every crucifixion starts with a beating. This was all a part of the Roman scientific formula that made crucifixion not only excruciating, but incredibly effective. And because of the charges that are leveled against Jesus, the officials in the governor's residence take their time and add an ironic twist. They adorn Jesus with mock royal symbols, a crown of thorns, a scepter of reeds, and a robe that is reserved for the royalty. And they mock him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. One of the commentaries I read this week in preparation for this message pointed out that humiliation and mockery, and not merely increasing the suffering, but humiliation and mockery are the point of this charade. The governor's officials want to make sure that Jesus suffers not only physically, but emotionally because they are mocking everything that Jesus stands for. They are mocking everything that Jesus had come to do. They were there to mock everything that Jesus was on the verge of accomplishing. Jesus suffered because of us. Jesus suffered on the cross. Jesus suffered before the cross, and Jesus did this willingly and without resistance. Jesus suffered in so many ways that make sense to us, right? Jesus suffered in so many ways that we can imagine. We know what it's like to have a friend turn our back on us, or what we would call nowadays ghosting. We know what it's like to be manipulated. We know what it is like to be asked loaded questions, and for some of us, we know what excruciating physical pain can feel like. But at the same time, Jesus suffered in ways that we just cannot fathom. Not a lot of us will go through what Jesus went through. And parts of the gospel just simply make me scratch my head and wonder how one person could endure so much. In all ways, what Jesus says to the author, what the author of the Hebrews says to us is that Jesus is our great high priest who has been tested in every respect, just as we are. But that's Jesus. His suffering was to build solidarity with humanity. His suffering was to fulfill prophecy. His suffering was to defeat death so that we could live life and life abundant. That's not always true for us, is it? The question still looms over us. The question still remains, what do we do with suffering? Our suffering doesn't have the lofty goals of Jesus, does it? Sometimes we suffer because we make bad choices. Sometimes we suffer because we made a boneheaded decision and it's going to hurt. 
I have a friend from back home that decided to reside his house by himself. Yet it was going great. He had everything taken down. He was starting to hang new siding, and he put his ladder up on some shaky ground. You know where this is going. Over went the ladder, down went the mic, and he made sure that no one saw him before he stood back up. Sometimes we suffer out of no action of our own. Someone else makes a choice that affects us adversely. When we become people of faith, God does not take away our ability to do evil. And God does not take away our suffering. And the unfortunate fact is that sometimes there is no good answer. Things in life are unfair. Life happens. We are imperfect people living in a fallen world, in a broken world. And part of that brokenness simply means that sin and evil are real. But friends, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of this week is that Jesus is God's answer to our suffering. Jesus is God's answer to our suffering. Jesus, the one who lives with us. Jesus, the one who eats with us. Jesus, the one who cries with us and suffers with us and dies like us, is the answer, is God's answer to suffering. Life doesn't always make sense, and sometimes there is no easy answer. But Jesus' death on the cross and everything that Jesus endures during this week redeems our suffering. Because Jesus suffered, we can see how suffering plays out. We can learn that suffering and death do not have the final word. Jesus does. Suffering and death and pain do not have the final word. Jesus does. Jesus, who suffered in this life. Jesus, who suffers with us. Jesus, who suffered because of us. Is God's answer. We simply have to hold on and wait for the hope and joy that are found in what comes next. So enter into this Holy Week, friends. Shout your hosannas as we go around the block. Shout your hosannas to the one that can save us. Walk with Jesus through the steps that lead from the governor's quarters to the cross of Calvary. Hold on and wait in the face of your suffering. See the full story and know that in all ways, Sunday is coming. Would you pray with me? Suffering and saving Jesus, we give you thanks for who you are. We give you thanks for all that you endured and what that means for us. Be with us as we go through this week, whatever that may mean for us. Be with us as we suffer. Real things outside of this place. And constantly reveal to us your purpose. Reveal to us your healing. Reveal to us your good news. That our suffering, that our pain, that our ailments and afflictions do not have the final word. You do. In sure and certain hope, we pray. Amen. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Redemption's hill, your blood was spilled for my ransom. Everything I once held dear, you counted all as.
was lost Lead me to the cross Where your love poured out Lead me to my knees Lord, I lay me down Rid me of myself I belong to you Go forth from this place in joy, praising God for his gift of enduring love. Lift high the palm branches of our faith, waving them in thanksgiving for the faithfulness of a loving God who is with us always, even as we go through our own suffering, traveling our own roads to Jerusalem. Amen. <laughs> 